Hey there, Rhoda here. Welcome to my craft room. Today, we're going to look at a folio that I made for Mom for Mother's Day. It is uh, held together but with two Velcro dots. It also has a waterfall inside. It has uh, a video on this where I flipped through and told what all the things were. It has a large tag here out the side and a top loading tag at the back. <clears throat> and so... Uh, there's a standing joke where I never give her an envelope for her card because her card is usually too big. Well, I fixed that issue in this because it's all one thing. I sewed it in the signature right here. And, uh, <clears throat> so we're going to get started with this piece that's eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And I picked this color because it sort of goes with the color scheme I'm going with. It's sort of going to be a butterfly design. So this is my crazy all-in-one kind of a deal. Um, by the, it's the works all-in-one by We Are Memory Keepers. And I liked it because it did a little bit of everything. So anyhow, when you want to score, <clears throat> this will be the flap area on your card. And you're going to score it at two and three quarters inches. Whoops. <laughs> it's already scored. I don't have to score it, so... Um, I'm just showing you that and three inches is the next one and then this doesn't extend out unless I pull my thingy out but I don't have the lines but the next one will be at nine inches because we want this in the center here the main body of our card base is six inches so from the three inch mark the next score line is nine inches and then uh, a quarter inch more which is nine and a, a quarter because your two gussets are a quarter inches each. Then you have an extra piece which will get glued on here to be the other part that wraps around. So let me get this out of the way because that part is done for now because we're going to assemble our <clears throat> base here. I've picked out these pretty colors for the outside of my card and I've picked out these colors for the inside. Because that would kind of go with anything. And here's the flat pieces here to go inside and out. So it's going to build up the strength of this card by adding all those layers. And then here's my four pieces that's going to be the waterfall part of the card. These were pieces I dyed out in the, on the porch. <laughs> and had a fun time doing it. You never know what kind of results you'll get. Okay. And <clears throat> speaking of which, I just did some baking today. And check these babies out. I wanted some fall colors. So I got harvest colors here. I love this one. I don't know how I got it. I, I combined tea and coffee and gel colors. And got a few to add to my journals that I'm going to be making. All right. Our addition needs to go on here first, and we're just going to go ahead and glue it and have that done. We're going to go and add the glue here. I hope everybody's doing well today, and everybody plans to get into the craft room and do a little R&R &R with the uh, paper and pens or however it is that you craft. I know everybody has a different style and a different way of doing their art. I thought at first I wanted to get into art journaling and I said, no, I ain't, I'm not into the junk journaling. And then look what happened. I, I, got, I got into it anyway <laughs> because it has so many avenues for me. It's got... Uh, beadwork it has you know the paper art that i love to create anything out of paper and and the boot it's fun and it makes beautiful beautiful items okay i think that's good we could press this down they call this burnishing when you're using your bone folder to push that glue into the uh, actual paper and it really helps. It, it will make a difference. I've noticed it makes a difference. 
All right, there's that. Now, we're going to try to start folding. And one of the ways I found it's easiest is to use your ruler and just place it against that score mark and I'll fold it up and I'll fold it again. Now I might not have to do that part right yet because I could just go ahead and put my, my uh, pieces on that are going to cover this. Now since I folded it that way, that is the inside of my book. We're going to go ahead and glue this down. And no time like the present. I'm, I'm debating in my head whether it's a good time to go ahead and cut my envelope flap shape or should I wait? Hmm. I'm going to put one layer on first and then I may work on the flap shape. With the one I made for mom, I've got where it's just kind of cut off. It's a, I get this on here, I'll show you again. It's just like a, the two angles and then the flat end. I don't want to get that too close to my, to my crease. Ugh, there we go. All right. See, hers is made like this. And I just came down at an angle on both sides. And cut it off and like you know how you make the top of your tags that's how you could do it you could cut off the one piece and take that triangle and flip it and get that piece and then I just slightly rounded with the scissors that edge and that's all I had to do so we could do that before we put our back on and I might make this one a little shallower than I did the last time. And all we're going to do is go up to that first part of that crease. Okay, then we're going to flip it and do the other side. And then this part will be done. And then we put our other piece on the outside. It's already been prepped for us. I think this will make a nice little card. A uh, happy mail. Uh, you've got quite a few things you could do with it. Um, now, where this is going to be a uh, a tuck, I guess, for a large card, that's where you may want to go in here and only glue this down on the outside edges. It depends on what you want to do with it. Now, when I found out about the side tuck over on that one, I had to bend the the pull part in, I would suggest making both of your pieces a top loading uh, card. That's a large tag. That would be the best way to go about this. Now it looks like I might, I might cut it down a bit. No, I don't think I need to. You want to make sure your gussets are going to bend. You don't want them to be too tight, but I think we're good. But I do see where I need to get something to cut the, the top out to make my thumb pull. Oh, let me let me grab my circle punch. Of course, I think I got everything over here. And then I don't have everything. <laughs> it never fails. Never. Okay. So I'm going to just stack those two together. And then I'm going to put... It in the middle now you can measure you can do however you want to do this but I think that's the middle right there <laughs> so that part's done and I kind of try to keep the uh, pattern continuous even though you're not going to see both sides together um, I'm going to go ahead and start on my outside edge here now you could do a two-sided tape if you would rather instead of the gluing because you're probably going to have a little bit of seepage with glue. Ugh, I can't even drive straight. And um, you want to make your card inside a little bit smaller to take care of that issue. Ugh. 
I haven't, I'm going all over the place. I haven't made this but that one time. But it, I, I really like the way it turned out. Everybody was doing waterfall journals. And I was curious how that was. And I said, well, let me try one in a card. So I like the way it turned out. Oops, let me see if I can land on that corner without bebopping everywhere. There we go. There. All right. And see, I kind of picked... Oof. See if I can pull that over just a little bit. And actually, you could pinch that because you're wanting something to go in it at the top. You don't want to fight it. You can do that little bit of a pinch trick and it will draw in and keep it away from my crease i didn't want it in the crease okay next i'm going to do another top loading like i said i decided to make this into a butterfly theme and uh i picked about all the papers are from butterfly collage yeah butterfly collage it's one of those hot buys at michael's but it has some beautiful papers in it. And, you know, some are, aren't quite my style, but the others that had real pretty florals, plenty you could fussy cut with and get um, floral pieces out of it to enhance other uh, ephemera. There we go. Me and talking and doing this is, whoo. <laughs> All right. Line up to the outside edge. I'm pretty good on my, ooh. I, I pinched it too hard too soon. There we go. Now. Now, I noticed that I'm a little off, but I don't know if that's going to really make that much of a difference. But you can go in and do some trimming. I got a little bit high, uh, lower there than I needed to, and I got a little bit higher here than I needed to. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to hurt because you're going to have an outside paper that goes on as well, and that may take care of that issue. All right. I found the best way to do your creases is with a ruler against the crease. And then I rub my bone folder on the outside and it gives it that curve and then I'll do the next one and this is just to kind of get it started oh, do it with my finger first just to get it the fibers moving a tad let me do this one and then we're going to do this one hope everybody gives this a try um i love to hear when anybody's trying any of my items out and how they received them and you know thought about uh how to do them and sometimes they'll change the, the makeup and i mean more power to you if you can in uh, enhance it or change it in some way to make it your own that's wonderful do it <laughs> that's that's what art is all about you're learning from someone else or you're taking an idea you see from someone else and you're making it into your own artwork is that where that got cut i think it is i think it is <laughs> i don't think it matters the butterflies are going in oh, i'm always forgetting to put my phone <laughs> on uh, airplane mode hopefully nobody else comes through uh, I don't get that many calls <laughs> nobody's interested uh, I live a quiet life in the country me and my cats my husband my mom's next door she goes to bed early so I don't have to worry about her calling me she already has <laughs> I have to take her to the doctor tomorrow. Uh, she likes me to be her taxi. She's up in her early 80s, so she finds it better to have me go. 
But that's fine. We go out and we have a, um, we get our lunch and we'll go shopping, grocery or otherwise, and have fun. And let's see this one. I need to line it up to the outside edge. And there we go. Push it down. Now you can do the credit card trick here to <laughs> reach for it where you can smooth it out. It works best with um, when you got glue stick, but you don't want to do glue stick with this. Glue stick is one of those things that's finicky and sometimes it'll be sticky. It depends on the glue stick you get. I've got to try some that my friend Michelle got me that's scotch uh, glue sticks. I think they're supposed to uh, adhere material, uh, paper, uh, maybe metal. I don't know. It's they, They're supposed to be really strong. And I've been trying to use up the one that I've already got. I try to be frugal whenever I can. Whee! Goodness gracious. I just filled up my glue bottle, so I'm good to go there. Okay. There we go. We got to get it on here before it starts to dry. Okay, right between our creases. All right. I believe that's done. I'm going to go ahead, since I got this out, I'll just use it. And see that one green uh, went really well with this olive. I suppose that's olive green. I'm not really sure. I like to get those packs of paper that's the all the different kinds you know what? I'm going to go ahead and use my little cutout here and go ahead and cut my paper to go on the flap. Maybe that'll be the best way to go about it. There we go. Oh, goodness. I try to do a shorts in the last few days. It's one of them new things that uh, YouTube has got going. My first one went crazy and it was just I was showing this filming system that I, I use I've got a Swiffer broom up here with a curtain rod and that uh, makes my camera sit up I put the the lens between the two cracks I've actually got a makeup sponge holding the two apart it's crazy I mean I'm filming on a budget <laughs> I didn't know if I was really going to get into this and I didn't want to put all that money into some kind of a a system. And I saw one of my ladies that I watched. She got one of those. It looks like the same one I've been looking at uh, on Instagram. They'll have the advertisements. But hers doesn't work for her. So I'm kind of curious if that would have even worked for me. So I'm going to keep going on as I'm going on. And... Hopefully mine will just keep working for me. All right, I'm going to do a little trimming because I can't get away with not trimming there. And then I have to trim here. Ooh. Some of these scissors and things I've had forever. This pad under me I've had forever. <laughs> I used to uh, do all my quilting on it. And maybe I need to go in the other direction for this. I'm already handed. Um, but it's a self-healing mat, so it works multifold for me. I'm not going to be doing any inking today. I didn't think it needed ink. I'm going to see if I need to do any trimming, though. I think I need to trim this edge down here. And I don't think I need to worry about it extending past this because these two pieces, oh gosh, that's thick. These two pieces are not going to be together side by side. So see, I think I can get away with not doing the other side. Because sure enough, I'll mess that up. 
<laughs> and then we got and then we got the mess up up here but you know i don't think i'm gonna worry about it because like i said you're not gonna see it from one side to the other we're good we're good okay next we've got her cover done it's ready to have big tags made for each side and i believe the tags will go in there pretty nice let me grab a piece of Ooh, ooh, scrap over here and see they'll slide in there good because I did that little pinch technique I'm not having a fight at all but when you have a larger tag like this you're probably going to want to make it pretty sturdy you're probably going to want to make it a little narrower like quarter an inch something like that less so you can make it a little thicker to go down to the into that length you've got because it's going to fight you <laughs> sure enough it will fight you all right what are we doing next we're doing our papers and see how nice the papers kind of go i got a yellow i got the green i got like a burgundy oh not burgundy but purpley blue that looks like the, the butterfly and that pink okay so each one of these is, of course, the eight and a half by 11. The thing happened uh, with my other one is that I did not want to cut my papers because I worked so hard to dye them. <laughs> so I ended up believing I could do uh, simple scores on them. So let me pull my scoreboard back up here and score it at certain spots. And let me cap this while we're going. I'll just do all my scores at first. And this is only a six inch scoreboard. So I've had to learn to flip it around or, you know, make it work for me. So the first page is this one. And it's actually going to be upside down to what it, I, I'm actually going to have it in the book. <laughs> I'll explain it in a minute. Um, okay, so it's going to be scored at six and at eight and a half. Is that right? <laughs> We're just going to go with it. Okay, it's going to be, it's, oh, maybe it's going to be, oh, no, it is right. This is going to be the back page and this will be the front page. So this is six. See, I can't even follow my own instructions. Isn't that horrible? Okay, so that's six. And then because I know that's six, <laughs> I'll go up two and a half more. And I know that's going to be eight and a half. This is my convoluted life. Okay, so there we go. There's that. That's page number one. Page number two, I think I'll go with pink next. Page number two gets it five and three eighths. Five and three. What did I say? <laughs> yeah, five and three eighths. Right there. And come down. Oops. I'm doing this because I thought maybe everybody would like to see my process and not just me zipping forward <laughs> kind of a deal. Um and then eight and three eighths. Boy, that's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and flip out. Let me pull this over. Okay. Eight and three eighths. Five and three eighths. Eight and three eighths right there. I'm going to make me a little notch. Did I make it? I'm going to make me a little pencil line then. That'll work it. Okay. And then. Ten and a half. Because this is basically just going to be like a little tuck over spot. Now this line that I've drawn in here, that is there so I can line up one end to the other. And it makes your life so much easier. I know you'll probably have seen some people that do that. But it really, really does make a difference. So that's what I'll do here. I'll just kind of put my little line on that dark, 
dark spot and just use it. Okay. There, page number two. Number three is our purple spot page. I don't know if there's a certain way I want to go. I'll just go with it this way. Maybe this way. <laughs> three gets scored first at four and seven eighths. Now, since this is kind of confusing, and I'm sure I'm here, there, and everywhere, I've tried to make my instructions better, I will have these in the uh, description box. And then eight and a half is your next one. Yeah, I'm trying to get better. Uh, still got the, the stage fright situation. <laughs> <laughs> what else have I got? <laughs> oh, I jump I jump around. What is that thing where they see it? Squirrel? <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> I have that a little bit of the squirrel syndrome. Okay, four and an eighth was our first one on this. And seven and three quarters is the next one. Seven and three quarters. Right there. Uh, but this is this is my way of getting around this short scoreboard. But I don't see that I need a bigger one. I just don't see it. Okay, that's done. Now we're going to start folding. Let's put them back in order. One, two, three, four. We're going to fold it in half first. Make sure I'm lined up. There we go. And now this part is going to get folded in again. And this becomes a pocket. With my other one, uh, I made a tall, tall, skinny tag that went down in here. And what I did is I glued it. And we're just going to go ahead and glue it. See if I can not wiggle too much. And like I said, that it's like an eighth of an inch two-sided tape. If you have a wiggle issue like me, you might think to get that and use it on situations like this because it really, <clears throat> it really will make a difference. You don't have to worry about seeping and moving and you can pull it off when you've got it down in the right spot. I love two-way tape. I've always got three sizes at least at any given time. Okay. Here's our big one. First one. Last one. I'm going to do our middle right here. Yeah, make sure I'm in the middle. I don't even think I need the uh, bone folder because this is easy enough. Okay. Now this one is going in and what was I doing here? Oh, it's a, I think it's a tuck this way. So let me go ahead and get this first piece. Let me get my, <laughs> let me go ahead and get this and relook at it. Okay, the second piece, yes, it's a tuck. So it's, it'll have a card in it. But to clean up that edge and strengthen that edge, where it's going to have all that traffic, I always put this extra piece down. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Have that done. All right. Go ahead and rub it and burnish it. There we go. Now our last fold is this one. You get your top and your bottom lined up. There we go. And then on this one, I see a little bit of the... Probably my paper was a little wrinkly on that one edge because when you... When you dye them outside and have them the sun bleaching them 
or even in the oven. I've, I've got some wrinkly ones from the oven as well from today. Okay, you're just gluing the top and bottom part there, and then you're putting that down. Now that one's prepared. And I more than likely am just going to show you the rudiments of putting it together. And then you can decorate. <laughs> I've got some decorations over there, but it'll make too long of a, a video. Okay, now that one goes in here. See how we're staggering it? It might be a half of an inch stagger. I'm not sure exactly what I've got going here. Okay, the purple one was scored right here in half. And this is an interesting one here. You might want to increase. Yeah, there we go. Because this one is going to meet up with the other one to make a pocket. For this front piece. <laughs> I didn't score it hard enough or something. I just not seeing it too well. There we go. Now this part here could be cut off, I guess, if you wanted. But see, I just left it so it'd be stronger. No, I did cut it. Well, rats. I didn't think I cut that, but I get I did, I did. Oh. See, I don't know what I'm doing from one moment to another. Now this would be perfect fodder for uh, those matchbook minis I was showing you the other week. Perfect piece for that. Okay, so this part gets glued down so it doesn't flip and flop around. I love the colors that came out on this page. Oh, I'll never, never be able to get it again. I can't seem to get the same results from one time to the next. It never fails. Okay, so that is my third page. And this is the fourth page. And more than likely, I'll be cutting this one too. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that. The front, the front piece will be trimmed as well because it's also going to get tucked or made into a large tuck pocket. Okay. Now open it back up. Glue it. Do, 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 do. I wore my gloves today so you didn't have some weird looking fingers on this video today. <laughs> I finally got smart. <laughs> I haven't been wearing my, my gloves when I do my hand dyeing, <laughs> my paper dyeing. Oh, this time I did. Okay, this one goes in here. And this here is going to get glued together there. Now, if one's a little bit further out than the other, that's fine. That's actually wonderful because you're able to go in that one little area there and glue it together. So what we're going to do, we're going to lay it like this, and I'll show you an easy way to kind of put it together. Let me get down here and lean, and I might get a better straight line for you. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to back it up against that piece. Make sure we're straight as we can be. Push it and pull at the same time. There we go. What is that? Push, pull, click, click. <laughs> I can't remember what that went to, but that popped into my head. Okay, I got a little bit of a, a overlap, but it's probably not enough to worry about. But see, I'm worrying about it anyway. All right, our pages are done. Now, all we have to do is sew it in our signature, or sew your signature in. Let me put you on pause. 
and I'm going to find something for the signature. Okay, we're back. And I got a few things done while I was traipsing around. And I went ahead and put my two Velcro dots on the inside of my flap. And I also put the, the other one on there as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get that down. And that's the easiest way to get lined up is to go ahead and stick them on there and this is extra sticky <laughs> so they're going to stick really well and you don't really even see them that much either that's pretty neat i know you would have seen this side so whenever you do velcro maybe think to do the the hook part on your inside now um i mean your cover <laughs> this is my system on putting in a three hole pamphlet stitch and I don't know, these are some kind of packaging I got ages ago, and I just use them. Um, plus, I went in here with my ruler, and this is a great ruler, the Tim Holtz one, because you've got a zero here on this one side, and what you do is you'll line up. Am I in the middle of the page? Okay. You'll line up this side and this side, so I've got four and a quarter on each end, so I know this is centered. So then I'll go in the inside of this one little gusset here because this is the one I want the signature in. But you could choose to put it in that one. It just depends on which way you'd like to do it. Uh, so I put a hole usually at zero and each three. And I also do the same thing with this. So the holes are going to line up. It's at the zero and the two threes. Then what I did was found... I just had this string hanging around <laughs> so I grabbed it and the rule of thumb is you you do the length or the height three times and that'll give you a little extra if you need it to do any dangles or beading uh, however you like to do it and I'm going to go ahead and get this needle done because I lose it <laughs> But this is, I guess it's a cross-stitch needle. It's blunt. I mean, it, there's nothing on the end there whatsoever. Okay, so our next assignment here is to do our holes. And we're going to do them separate from the actual signature. But some people will do them together. I'm not that brave. <laughs> so we're just going to put our little holes in here for the thread to go through once we go to put everybody together now this here may be where you want to uh, connect them well I'm trying to reach for a couple of paper clips there we go with this is so thin a couple paper clips will do the job so you can go you go up here make sure all your corners are together go down here whoops not that way actually I don't even think we have to put four paper clips you can but I think we're good with two yeah definitely fine with two now they're going to be held together long enough for us to poke a hole and usually you like to try to keep it at a, a V it just helps to guide it okay there's that there's that and there's that and like I said this can be done large scale for a journal or it can be done small scale like I'm doing here but this is usually how they'll do their journals and I learned from scrapbooking with me so she always went into the, the center now I'm going in from the inside out you can do from the outside in um, so you've got different options here. Some people will start at the top hole. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this right here under this paper clip. Just so I don't tug it out. Then I'm going to go in the bottom hole. And then go in the bottom hole here. I find it's easier just to do them separate. <laughs> then you're going to tug it. And then you're going to go in the top hole see I'm here there and everywhere with this thing so and then this last one is the trickiest one let me pull my extra string here 
Is that it? Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to have to do is go in that hole again and go in this hole again. And you're wanting to be on the opposite side than the other string. There we go. Let me pull this all the way off. And where's the loose end? There we go. Okay. Now what you'll do is you'll tug a little bit. You don't want to tug too hard, but you're wanting to make sure everything is secured. Now we can go over this with some um, alcohol markers or something, and that'll disappear. I've done that before, and it just, it's great. You just got to find the right color you want to use on that. Now, here's where you just do a square knot. Do, do the knot one way, do the knot the other, and I always do a third for <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah. Now, you can actually just do you, uh, you could actually have dyed this before, but, you know, that's a, that's a weird green, so I don't think that's going to happen. That I can find that color green to dye it. I may have had it over there with my alcohol. There's a forest moss that was close. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for now. You always don't want to cut it all the way until you're sure everything is fine and dandy. <laughs> so I think it's all fine and dandy. We've got our outside. We've got everything looking good here. Like I said, I'm gonna colorize that. And then you got your inside. You just need to do your two top loading tags. We've got, I did forget to put my little thumb hole here for that. I can still get my little skinny one in there. Um, but you don't have to. If you've got a tab on the top of that, you might not need it. Then we've got this one, which is a tuck. We've got this one, which is a large pocket tuck. And then the rest of these are just paper to decorate as you see fit. Okay, I'm sorry I put you su through such a long episode, but I thought you got a few uh, neat techniques there. I hope you try this. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed what uh, they saw and gives it a try. Uh, please give me uh, a thumbs up and uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you.